12 of 12 starts right now. 12 minutes, no commercials on TV and on the go on the 12 News app, Facebook, and on YouTube. Hey guys, I'm Ryan. In today's talker, is the coronavirus pandemic impacting your travel plans? We want to hear from you. Weigh in right now at 12news.com slash bullhorn. TSA at Sky Harbor is actually closing two checkpoints at Terminal 4 because obviously less people are traveling. Now you can bring larger bottles of hand sanitizer with you on the plane. TSA isn't enforcing that three ounce rule and you can also bring disinfecting wipes and face masks. So weigh in right now at 12news.com slash bullhorn. Right now 70% of you are saying that it is impacting your plans or you can comment down below if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. The results are just minutes away. And now we want to make sure you have the latest facts on the coronavirus here in Arizona. Right now, the Arizona Department of Health Services says there are 45 cases of the virus in our state, 22 coming in Maricopa County. Thankfully, no one has died. More than 330 tests have been sent to the state public health lab, and 175 of them have come back negative. Results are still pending on 130 tests. This morning, Governor Ducey went to Sunset Elementary in Maryvale to help serve meals to students who were out of school during the virus, and he had this to say to parents. And we want every parent out there to know schools are still providing meals for any kid under the age of 18. These resources are available. So please visit your local school district website to find out when and where you can stop by for breakfast and lunch. Now we are committed to having your questions about the coronavirus answered by experts. So let's send it over to TRAM now as we continue with our mission to focus on facts and not fear. Joining us now is Dr. Pyle Coley. Dr. Coley, thank you so much for joining us to answer our viewer questions. Thanks for having me, it's my pleasure. So let's get to our first one here. Nicole Burns writes this, any testing done with upping vitamin D3 and C for treatment or prevention? Yeah, so the, it's a good question. So vitamin A, B, C, D, and E, Iron, selenium, and zinc are all involved in our immune function. So deficiencies of these vitamins can certainly increase your susceptibility to infection. However, the opposite is not true. So taking extra doses of these vitamins sometimes can even be toxic. Let's get to our next question. Gary Pelfrey asks this, should public restrooms be closed? Uh, so that's another good question. So there's a study that just came out earlier this week that is suggesting that there may be some fecal oral spread. And what that means is that if people go to the bathroom and don't wash their hands properly and touch surfaces, those surfaces could potentially get contaminated because there are viral particles present in the feces. There was also a study that came out of Hong Kong that showed if the septic system is not properly installed when somebody pulls the flush and if their feces is contaminated with the coronavirus, you could get aerosolization of those small particles and if somebody else inhales that, that could potentially increase their risk. Having said that, for the most part in the United States, public restrooms have relatively safe sanitation systems. And as long as you're making sure when you touch those surfaces, you're really washing your hands, you take a paper towel to turn off the faucet so that if there's any contamination on those surfaces, you're not getting it directly on your hands. And you're maintaining that social distancing so that you're not interacting with people in the restroom at less than six feet. If you follow these precautions, it's probably safe for you to use a public restroom in the U.S. Someone asked us this question, once people have coronavirus, are they immune from catching it again? Yes, that question has come up quite frequently, actually. So the short answer is probably yes. We think that it behaves just like other respiratory viruses, where when you catch it once, you become immune to it because your immune system learns how to fight it. However, there have been some case reports coming out of China where people have recovered from the coronavirus and maybe have you know, caught it again or have shown evidence of having viral particles in their blood again. So we think that it may be possible that your immunity can go down over time or wane like your immune system forgets about it, or it's possible that the virus could mutate and therefore you could catch it again, like the flu virus does. We can catch the flu more than once. So most likely, yes, but we're still learning further details about that. Someone texted this to us. Have we seen the worst part of this coronavirus? Are we on an incline yet to recovery and return to normalcy, or are we still in limbo? Unfortunately, the answer is no. 
the worst is yet to come, as Dr. Fauci has said many times. We are not on the path to recovery. We are on that steep part of the slope where our cases are multiplying in an exponential fashion. So we had 3,500 cases in the U.S. two days ago, and today we have more than 7,000. So in two days, we've more than doubled our number of cases, and that's with all the lack of testing and everything out there. So there's probably many more cases that we haven't detected. So again, we are in a in a window right now where we really need to get all hands on deck, doing social distancing, doing all the things we talked about, maintaining distance, washing hands, sanitizing surfaces, really avoiding contact with other people in order to flatten that out and start to peak and get on that road to recovery. Because if we continue at this rate, our healthcare system is going to get overwhelmed because everyone is going to get sick at the same time. And we don't have the resources right now to accommodate that many people getting sick together. Let's just say somebody feels like they are coming down with something and they think possibly mm -hmm. it could be Corona or it could be you know something else. And they're showing the symptoms Walk us through exactly how they should treat it and when do you call the doctor? Yeah, so this is another thing that the guidance has kind of shifted on just today. So initially we were saying if you have any symptoms at all, call your doctor and get tested because the doctors wanted to keep a pulse on how many cases there are in the United States. Currently, there's so many cases out there and so many more that we probably haven't detected in our community that our guidance has really shifted. And instead, what we're saying to people is that if you're having mild symptoms and you feel well enough to be at home, you just assume that you have coronavirus infection. You don't need a test. It's not going to change anything about the way that we treat you or how you do. Just assume you have it. Isolate yourself in your home so that you're not exposing your family members. And that means, you know, using one bedroom and bathroom that nobody else is using in the house. And make sure that anyone who's taking care of you, your caregivers, you know, are wearing gloves and are wearing a mask. Make sure you yourself are wearing a mask when you interact with anyone else at home. Um, and just assume that you have the coronavirus and try to recover at home. The time to really seek medical attention is if your symptoms are progressing, becoming more severe, or, and this is a big one, so I want everyone to remember, if you develop shortness of breath. So shortness of breath is that key symptom that makes this very different from the flu or from just a cold because the flu can give you a fever, the flu can give you a cough. But if you've got shortness of breath, it's in your chest. Because this is a respiratory infection, that's when I really want you to pick up the phone and call your doctor and see if you need to come into the hospital to be treated. Wow, you have given us such great information. Thank you so very much, Dr. Coley, for your insight. We really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me again. Thanks. Thank you, Tram and Dr. Coley. You can stay up to date with all the latest developments in this evolving story. Download the 12 News app for facts, not fear, on coronavirus. And you can get access to our complete coronavirus coverage by just texting the word facts to this number, 602-444-1212. Well, it has been a wild, stormy couple days here in the Valley. Crystal's here with your forecast 411 on the first day of spring. I know, it feels more like the first day of winter, and there's some numbers to uh, back up that suspicion. I'll show you in just a minute. At the moment, a look at that radar. We have showers and even thunderstorms acting up again. We had a rumbler over here in Queen Valley. It spit out two lightning bolts, a little bit of rainfall, and that's about it. Let's head up to the high country where we're seeing some snow showers springing up around Flagstaff, down towards Sedona. Snow levels are landing right around 5,000 feet at the moment with a little rain and snow mix right around the neighborhoods in Payson, not too far off from Prescott and some snow stretching out towards Overgard and Sholo will continue to touch off a smattering of snow and rain showers here and there throughout the rest of today, especially in the higher terrain. So we've just got to keep our eye to the sky for those last minute showers, adding to the snowfall we've already picked up in the high country. Look at the scene in Flagstaff. Carrie's little girl's kind of going, oh, wait a minute, where did I bury my bone? <laughs> it's extra buried now under more than a foot of snow. The whopping total is now up to 13 inches of snowfall in Flagstaff. Alpine, nine inches for you. Pine Top, eight. Same with Prescott. And the, some of the readings in Sholo are up to six inches of snowfall. You could add a plus sign because there still is fair game opportunity each hour in the p.m. hours now, even into the early a.m., 
to continue to see some of those flakes swirling down and adding up. Probably an additional inch max out of those that do develop. So just light snowfall as far as valley rainfall chances. Yeah, we also have to watch for renegade raindrop throughout the rest of today. Many locations will stay dry, but don't be surprised if you see a stray shower even into those early AM hours. The totals thus far, wow, Sun City, you're standing out at over an inch. You tip the scales there. Just shy of a half of an inch in Goodyear and Paradise Valley. 0.16 was all Sky Harbor received in the rain gauge. And the rain gauge is in Gold Canyon now measuring more than an inch of rainfall. So with that, even that little 0.16 that we received, you add that all up to what we already had so far this month. And now Phoenix is ranking in the top 10 for rainiest marches on record at 1.94. Happy first day of spring to you. Oh yeah, <laughs> it is the first day of spring. 78 is usually what you would expect to find on the thermometer, but we're not even going to get to that typical high temperature for the first day of winter today. Maxing out in the low 60s. We're going to stay below average through the weekend, but at least it'll brighten up. Be near 80 on Sunday and Monday. And Ryan, maybe some more showers in the cards for us next week. Keeping you busy this year. All right, thanks, Crystal. Back to today's talker. Is the coronavirus pandemic impacting your travel plans? TSA at Sky Harbor is actually closing two checkpoints at Terminal 4 because less people are traveling. And right now, 71% of you are saying, yeah, and yeah, of course. I mean, I don't know how else you could be answering this. It has to be at least affecting the way you're thinking about traveling. Keep voting, 12news.com slash bullhorn. And if you're watching on Facebook and YouTube, go ahead and comment down below. And that's your 12 at 12, the facts on everything you need to know in just 12 minutes, no commercials. Have a great day.